Hi there, I'm SR Coder and welcome to my next video. In this video, it's a real quick one. I'm just going to uh, create a 3D gamepad exactly like this. Uh, you'll see that this gamepad has um, interactable buttons. So if I put in the wrong code, I get an error message. And if I put in the correct code, it can activate using events, um, anything in your scene. So uh, let's just get straight to the video. So for the actual keypad, um, I've grabbed a few things off the internet just to have a little look. So we're kind of looking for this type of thing where there's the different numbers and uh, the star and the hash for some reason. Um, I would plan this out, I think. Um, what I want to do is I want to have a top-level keypad um, game object. So I want to have this, this top-level uh, code because what I want to do for every single button, I want to be able to just use it just like a UI button. And um, this UI button is just going to um, tell the keypad, it's just going to have an event telling the keypad that um, that it's been pressed. And uh, depending um, on which number it is, um, for example, if this is the button number one, it just passes with the event that, that actual number. So that way I can have any number that I want. This could be a number four. And uh, when this uh, event fires, it just passes the number four up to the main keypad. And then it'll be the responsibility of the main keypad to just keep track of um, how many buttons have been pressed and uh, whether it's the correct combination or not. That way I can write one class for the actual um, the actual button and uh, that can have an event in it that uh, will just send information up to the keypad and I can have one class for the keypad itself. So that's the, the basic plan. And um, what I'm not sure about yet, and I'll, I'll, I'll experiment a little bit more and I can show you both methods is um, whether I want this to be an actual canvas uh, with uh, UI buttons on them, or whether I want it to be more like um, more like this one where there's actual 3D meshes that are uh, created that uh, when you click the mesh, um, that is the thing that causes the event. And uh, that's just part of the planning. So uh, let's get started with the video. So I've got a brand new MT project. Um, I've called mine Keypad Tutorial. And this is just using 2021.1.17, but um, pretty much any version will work. So what I'm going to do is just trial out the first uh, method. So I'm going to create an empty top level game object and call this P Keypad. Um, on top of that, I'm going to add in just some cubes just to see if we can uh, get this running. So I'll call this um, the housing and uh, let's maybe make this just the center of the of the world so we can see it. And the housing itself, I'll just make it a meter by a meter um, scale just now. And then uh, let's just add another, um, another cube on there and we'll call this one um, button. And this one needs to be significantly smaller. So let's make it 0.2 by 0.2 by 0.2 and just bring it in front so that we can see it. So um, this could be, and I'm just going to test this out to see if this works. And um, this could be our thing. Now, by default, these things, um, this button comes with this box collider. And um, you can see uh, just in the documentation. So when the collider has a, a mouse over it, um, there's an on the mouse over event that happens. Um, just trying to find this mouse over event, here we go. So this mouse over event happens, um, gets sent to anything that has a collider. So this uh, this event should be picked up as a, a mono behavior. Um, so if I just search for mono behavior, and then you see all the different um, extra things that hardly ever get used. So um, if we just look through here, uh, there should be an on mouse over one. So this on mouse down, and on mouse over. Um, on mouse down is called when the user has pressed the mouse while over the collider. So this on mouse down event, um, if this is on, the script is on an object that has a collider, this event will get called, um, as it says here, this event is sent to all scripts on the game object with a collider. Um, when the user has pressed the mouse button while over the collider. So that's a, uh, that's a pretty easy way to detect whether this button has actually been pressed. So let's just give that a go. Um, what we'll need to do is we're just going to, uh, for now, we'll just write a script on this button and we'll call this 
a button script and then we'll have a little go at, uh, at making it. So if I call this um, button script with no spaces and then we'll just open this up in Visual Studio and we'll see if we can get it working. So pretty much we don't need anything in here and in theory if I start typing in on mouse on mouse uh, down it was um, then we'll just do a quick debug dot log uh, to see if um, if this can actually work so I'm just going to do a debug dot log because it's one of the best ways to work out whether these things are working or not so just check um, everything that should be in place so what we should have is that the button has the script on it that's good and it has the collider and that collider isn't a trigger and in theory now um, let's get the console up so we can see clear that out and then hit play so um, hopefully my camera is looking at it so if I if I click on the button you can see that um, if I click anywhere else you don't get the event but when I click on the button you actually get this event so that looks like that could be a really good technique for me being able to um, make a keypad and uh, we'll build on that and we'll go from there and see how we go on. All right, so um, I think what the basic plan is, I want to store um, exactly what number it is I'm pressing. So I'm going to create a public variable and we're going to make this of an integer type because it needs to be a number and we're going to call it um, keypad number and for this one I'll just make this equal to one I'll just initialize it to one and um, what we want to also do is uh, we want to create a, a unity event so that it sort of copies exactly the system that we would use inside of the uh, canvas items or buttons so I'm going to add in um, using unity engine dot events and from the top of the code here I'm going to add in um, a public uh, unity event and it's all the way down the list public unity event and I'll call it um, a keypad clicked um, this is a really powerful way of doing it if you haven't seen any of my other videos um, but uh, it's a real powerful way to be able to create um, any event an event system to be able to have listeners listen to this event so that it separates out some of the responsibility of individual things to um, so they don't get interconnections across a lot of things so when you're doing big pieces of code or big projects you want to try and make sure that that doesn't happen so all that we need this this on mouse down event gets triggered by unity when we click on the object with the collider and what we want to basically do is just send this uh, or invoke this keypad clicked event and anything that's listening to it will um, will get uh, notified so um, it's pretty easy uh, you just type in um, keypad collect dot invoke and uh, that's exactly it the next thing you really want to do we're going to want to do is to uh, get the, re the receiver so um, I'm just going to select this gamepad um, object and I'm also going to create a new script so I'll just go down uh, down to new script here and we'll call this keypad um, just because I should probably keep that as keypad um, then we're just going to open up this keypad script and we're just going to try and see if we can receive the event from that so with the keypad script open just going to get rid of all of this stuff I'm going to make a public function so that we can access this in the button it's going to be a void return type and we're going to call it um, uh, button collect And what we're going to do is we're going to take in an integer, um, an integer value. We'll just call this number, and this is going to be the number that was actually clicked. And uh, just to test again, it's always a really good idea before you invest any more time in it. It's a good idea to just do a little test. So I'm just going to do um, clicked, and then uh, just find out if we actually get the information back from this. So I'm just going to do a little string interpolation so the value we get past this button clicked should be printed out after the word clicked so 
um, if we look at the other um, the other button, we're not actually sending any information right now, but the Unity event's pretty clever. So what we can do is um, when we have the, the button here, uh, what we can do is when we choose a specific dynamic function, we can actually pass information to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I've got this, uh, if you haven't seen this yet, so this is the Unity event right here, uh, just like the UI elements work. So I'm going to hit the plus here. I'm just going to drag the keypad, which should have the script on it, um, into the game object, then drop down to the keypad class, and uh, we should be able to see that we have the um, public button clicked. Now, when it popped up, you'll see that um, also, because it knows it needs an integer, also a button, uh, a, an input string popped up here as well. So this is unique to this instance. So if I have 10 buttons, um, nine buttons on the, 12 buttons, sorry, on the screen, then I'm going to be able to have different numbers or values because um, they're integers. I'm going to have different values for every single one of those buttons, which makes my life an awful lot easier because then I can copy it. So in order to test this, all I should need to do, uh, make sure everything's saved, just click on this. And uh, we should see down in the console over here, when I click on this button, it should say, clicked me, which was the event from the mouse down, and also clicked one. So we know that it's passed the right information. It's always a good idea to test again. So I'm just going to go here, change this to uh, 34, I just run it again just to see. And again, when I click on this button, um, the value 34 gets sent. So I've, I've tested to make sure that it is actually working as expected. So before I duplicate this button a bunch of times, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some, some text on it. So um, if I right click on button here, there's 3D objects and there's actually a 3D text. Um, you'll get notified to import the text mesh pro uh, resources if you just um, import those resources so everything works um, as expected. The text mesh pro is actually, you can see here I've made a child of this this button so I can make the text anything I want. And I'll leave this information just for a second. I'm just going to put the number one um, in the text and uh, go down to the center align and center align. So it's center at the top and the bottom. You'll see that the text mesh pro um, item has this rect transform. Now what I want to do is I've got the transform tool on because I want to move it just in front so we can kind of see it. Um, it's also uh, the wrong size and stuff like that. So, we'll, and the colors have to be fixed. So, um, change the color first. So, this vertex color is white. I just drag that down to black so I can actually see it, and uh, just move it one more time so that it's just in front of the button. Um, I'm going to go on to the, uh, the the sort of like the 2D um, tool here because it's the right orientation for this. So, I'm just going to move it um, approximately. Uh, so that it fits the button. So I'm doing my best to make sure it kind of the, the, rect, the rectangle sort of canvas thing that it uses fits the button. Um, pretty close. You'll see that the, the text is a bit funky because the font size um, has been set. So I'm going to say auto size. It doesn't quite do it because the minimum I noticed isn't quite enough. So if I drag this minimum down to something like I don't know, 10 or something like that. It should be um, small enough that it fits inside. Because um, it's set as an auto size, as you make this bigger, it'll auto size the, the number. So if yours is a slightly different size, it should still fit. So what that's given me is a, is a button with uh, some text on it. And I, the TextMouse Pro 3D one works quite well because you can't see it from the wrong side and stuff like that. It actually looks pretty good. So we have um, just one button. Uh, obviously, you'd want to probably make this in Blender, but because we're just playing around, we want something that will function. Um, the annoying gizmo here, I found, just switch off 3D icons for now, just so it doesn't get in the way. Um, it's just frustrating how you, you unselect the thing and it ends up being, um, being huge. So uh, that's the basics of creating the button. And I'm just going to quickly duplicate so that I've got, um, I'm just going to go for the nine buttons, each one. Uh, all the numbers one to nine and we're just going to ignore the zero for now 
uh, so we can write some code. All right, that's uh, pretty good. So um, all the buttons are in place. They've all got the correct numbers on. And what I need to make sure is that I just change the number for every single one so that it matches the number that's actually on it. So I'll just quickly run through that as well. All right, that's done now. So we should move on to focusing on the keypad script so that we can get the right combination of buttons to be able to uh, do something for uh, whatever it is our, um, our keypad needs to do. So just as I was thinking about the best way of doing this, one of the things that struck me is that the, um, we may not have numbers for all of the numbers. We may want the hash or the star like we saw in the pictures earlier on. Um, the other thing is when you're adding, uh, rather than numerically add numbers together, um, I want to be able to just uh, string them together or put them right next to each other and compare against the string. So what I'm going to do is this um, button click. I'm actually going to turn the uh, data type that we pass to it um, to a string so that when we when we actually pass um, that information, it's just the string number. So we can compare it to uh, something like this. So we can have um, a public and we'll call it um, entry and we'll make it sorry we'll make it a public uh, string and we'll say um, password password and we'll make it equal to something like one two three four um, that way um, we are comparing um, the string so as we receive a number in and um, we're just going to add it or append it to the string until we have four of them and then compare it to the final password to see if we actually get entry or not. So we've changed this to string. The only thing that you need to check when you do drastic things like this is that you'll see that the, the actual events go uh, a bit wonky. So um, for each one of them, um, it's got this uh, missing button click because it thinks it's a different event. So I'm just going to shift select them all. And then again, just drag keypad on, choose the keypad function. So I'm doing this for all of them all at the same time and um, we should have this button click that's a string. Now I'll need to go down unfortunately and change every single one so I've just got button one and then I'm just going to go two and just quickly go through each one of these until I have um, everything set up again. All right that's them all set up now. Um, we're just going back to this um, keypad code now so we can start uh, doing something with this uh, string value that we get sent to it. So um, I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a private string as well, which will store the actual input from the user. Um, so we'll call this um, user input and we'll make it equal to a blank string for now. And then um, every time the button's clicked, all we're going to say is we're going to add um, user input. We're just going to add the number onto, uh, so plus equals number. And uh, in theory, that should just um, keep adding that string onto the uh, the actual value. So again, every small step, it's a really good idea to test these things. So I'm just going to debug.log again, and I'm just going to debug.log um, user input uh, straight to the console. So um, it's probably important that um, when the level starts, so I'm going to create the start function. And I'm just going to make sure that the um, user input gets uh, written to absolutely nothing just in case. So um, it's usually a good idea to have a start anyway. So we're only really looking for this button clicked event. So let's just, uh, actually there's one thing I want to do in this button script. There's this debug.log. I'm going to remove that now because we know it works and uh, we don't really need to leave that in anymore. So we'll just have this one in place and uh, we'll quickly test. So what we should see as we test now, is um, as we click every button, we should end up with uh, the, the four, the number. So I press four buttons, I press the one, then the five, and at each time it adds on um, that string to the user input. So when we know when it gets to the length of the string gets to four, we should 
compare it to the password because we're expecting a password of four items and then we should act on that by either um, allowing access or um, invoking an event or um, or if they get it wrong we should just inform the user and uh, reset that back to back to blank again so they can have another go so let's just have a go at programming this so um, what we're basically going to do is this button collect event will get called every single time that somebody presses the button. So I'm just going to um, just find out what the length of that is. So if the um, user input dot length is, uh, shouldn't be greater than, but um, if it's greater than or equal to four, so if the length of it gets to four, um, then what I'm looking for is that we want to uh, check the password. Um, so just remind myself that this is what I'm going to do. So we're going to compare the two strings against each other. And uh, again, it's just if um, user input uh, is equal to, and then we'll just say um, password. So if the two things are equal, then um, let's for now just uh, debug.log uh, and we'll say um, entry allowed. Um, if it's not, so if we'll do this else in here, if the two uh, pass what the user types in is not equal to the password, what we're going to say is debug.log, um, uh, not this time, and then we'll uh, simply set this user input to be back to this empty string. So uh, we'll sort of reset the user input so they get a chance. And obviously um, the types of things that we want to do is uh, is we want to um, maybe play a sound or something like that when we get to this. Um, and in here we want to probably do something like invoke uh, the event and play, um, play a sound also. So we'll just remind ourselves that we're going to do this at some point in code. And um, pretty much it. Just take a quick look. Um, yep, that's all good. And a button click is fine. So let's just test this and make sure that this works. So um, I've got the console up. And we'll just clear that silly message. It pops up all the time. And uh, we'll just get this running. I probably should move the camera a bit closer too. So um, I click the 1, 1, 5, and then 9. And then it said not this time because I didn't get it right. In theory, I should be able to press one, two, three, and then four. And it said entry allowed. So we now know that this works. And the next step is to maybe start on some of these um, to do's like invoking the event um, or playing the sound. So um, for sound effects, I thought I'd do the sound effects first. And um, one of the coolest sites that I found is called Sound Bible. Um, what I've done is I've found a few sounds. I'm just going to download those sounds and uh, and chuck them in. So I've got this error alert one. Um, I'm just going to download this because uh, we're only going to be playing them once. I found that MP3 is a nice uh, small sound size. And um, if you were going to be looping sounds, it's better off with a WAV file because um, you don't get a little click between them. So I'm just going to download these uh, these three sounds and we'll just drag them into the project. Um, and you can do the same ones uh, if you want, or you find any sounds that you like. And, uh, and when we're done with that, um, I'll see you back in the project. So I'm just going to uh, make myself a new folder. It's always good to be organized. And uh, we'll just call this sounds. And I'll take my three sounds and just drag and drop them into that folder. Um, in theory, these three sounds don't need anything done to them. Uh, they should be fine. Uh, what we do need to do, however, it's a weird bug um, that I found. Um, just clicking on the keypad, we've got Text Mesh Pro at a certain distance. We get this weird sort of, it's kind of odd. Um, so this, uh, the keypad is the thing that's going to actually play the sounds. So uh, we're going to need a, um, an audio source um, in here. So I'm just going to click on that um, audio source. I'm not going to add uh, a clip that it's going to play and we don't want it to play on a wake. So we're going to create a script. Um, we've already got a script, but we're going to make the script uh, grab a hold of this audio source and uh, choose a specific clip to play. So we'll go into our code for the keypad. Just zoom out a bit, kind of a bit big. 
and um, we're just going to have um, some of the uh, sounds um, in here. So we're going to make them public so that we can um, play them and we're going to have to name them. So we're going to make this a public audio clip and we'll call it um, a click sound and we're going to have another another public audio clip. We're going to call this um, uh, open sound and we're going to have another public audio clip and this time it will going to be um, uh, a no sound. Let's call it a no sound. So when we when we don't get entry, no entry, we'll get the no sound and we'll get the open sound when we get entry. Um, now it's really not difficult to uh, to play sounds. So I'm just going to get the um, the um, audio audio source audio source, and we're going to call this audio source. We'll just use the suggested name there. And inside of start, we're just going to say audio source equals get component. We're just going to um, get the audio source component so that we're able to play sounds. We're going to use the audio source play one shot. So um, just find the right place in code. So when we actually click, uh, this is us actually having clicked. So what we're going to say is um, audio source dot uh, play, play one shot. And then it allows us to choose the clip that we want to play. So we want the click sound to play then. And I'm just going to go to the one we actually, if we manage to successfully get it, um, we'll say entry allowed. We can leave that debug.login. And we're going to say audio source.play one shot again. And this time we're going to say the, uh, what do I call it again? We said the open sound. So open sound. And over here, when we unsuccessfully do it, we have this um, audio source dot play one shot again, and it was uh, no sound this time. And again, it's just a really good idea to test us. We still need to add the clips in. You'll see they've come up on this left hand side. So we had the uh, click sound. So this was, I'm just going to make this. Um, smaller so they turn up. So this computer error alert one is the click. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. The click sound was the mouse double click. That's the one. The open sound, um, I used. I decided to use a magic wand one because it sounds like you should win. And this um, error alert is the no sound. You can have them any way you want. Uh, the last thing before I test this again is um, I just wanted to move the camera uh, a little bit closer. So the camera is kind of like miles away right now. I'm just going to just looking in the um, little preview down here because I want to make it a little bit closer so we can kind of see what's going on. So uh, let's test this again. And uh, what we should see this time is if I get the password wrong, so I'm going to do one, 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 one. I hear the click every time and it gives me the wrong noise. And then if I choose one, two, three, four, I get the correct noise. So we know that that's worked. So the last bit, which should be kind of no surprise that we're going to do is um, we want to make it that this uh, keypad when you finally get entry does something. And uh, just like we did with the buttons, the easiest way is to just invoke a method. So we're going to just do exactly what we did before. Um, so we're going to use the using Unity Engine and uh, Unity Engine dot events. And then what we can do is just create a public um, a public unity event. So we'll go down to the end. So a public unity event, and we're going to call it um, on um, entry allowed. Uh, then we just literally invoke this event, which will allow us to do pretty much anything um, when we finally get in. So in the correct place, when we get the input after we've played the wind sound, we're just going to say on entry allowed dot invoke and this will allow us to just invoke anything um based on uh on the uh, whoever is listening to this event or the listeners that you create so um usually 
as you see here. So we've got the keypad, just minimize this um, audio source. So you'll see in here this on entry allowed. We can add anything that we like in here. So um, just to prove that it's going to work, um, I'm just going to do something that's probably a really good, really bad idea is um, I'm going to create an event in here and um, I'm just going to take the, the whole keypad and I'm just going to say um, game object uh, set active and uh, make it inactive. So uh, the keypad will disappear um, when uh, you get the correct entry. So uh, you, as I see, you can um, have anything. I've got um, videos in my series where I show you how to do how to do doors, how to have doors animations trigger. Um, and if you want to leave some comments in the um, in the uh, leave some messages in the comments there if you want any suggestions that you want me to show you that we could do with this keypad. Um, but uh, just quickly test this to show you that it works. So um, I think you can hear the the audio. But if I do uh, the the wrong ones. Um, it says not this time and if I do one two three four the whole thing disappears so you know that um, absolutely everything does work uh, so yeah that's the that's the basics of it we've made a, a pretty simple keypad there's lots more we could do if I had a little more time and I was to do more uh, more work on this I would probably have the buttons animate so when they're clicked it plays a, a really short animation of them dropping in However, um, because we made it nice and simple, um, ideally the actual mesh of the button should be separate from the button and the collider um, so that you can animate each button individually and then use the same animation for all of them rather than, um, rather than having to have the animation over the keypad, uh, at which point you'd need a same animation or sorry, a different animation for every single button which would be a pain in the butt so there are easier way, easier ways to do it than that um another thing if you uh, are keen to show for me to show you how to do the canvas method of doing a keypad as well uh, by creating a 3d canvas so it's just like the standard 2d ui but it sits on a set a certain position inside the scene and um, that's also just a different way of doing it but um an equally valid way of doing it too so if you want me to show you that um, or another tutorial for that just let me know um, and uh, like and subscribe and thanks for watching again cheers